You might already think you know everything you need to know, right? Especially if that pertains to one of the most luxurious products in the world. And of course, loved by many people. But today, let me tell you things about this elegant piece that anyone in the world would love to have. Hello guys, this is Megan and I am thrilled you decided to join us today. And welcome to another video of the Content Promoter, the channel where we feature luxurious things and the life of wealthy people. For those new to this channel, please subscribe to be updated. Okay, so now, we will talk about what many people consider the most iconic and luxurious watch brands in the world. Well, I know some of you might be already familiar with this one. But today, let me tell you things that you didn't know about these luxurious watch brands called Rolex. Hans Wolfsdorf and Alfred Davis, a German and a Brit, founded Rolex 112 years ago in 1905. But contrary to popular belief, the journey began in London, not Geneva. The Hans Wilsdor Foundation now owns the corporation, which has developed into an $8.8 .8 billion brand. Rolex was ranked 64th on the world's most valuable brands list last year, with about $5 billion in sales. We at the content promoter feel that a truly luxury company should have a crown as its emblem. And Rolex has long been a brand we like. So, if we ever created a video about them, we had to get it right. So, let us get started. Number 1. The Rolex name doesn't mean anything. It just sounds expensive. One of the two founders of Rolex, Hans Wilsdorf, sought a name that was memorable and simple to speak for people of various languages. He understood it needed to be short and look beautiful when worn on a wristwatch. He thought it should be five letters long, so he began creating hundreds of combinations using all of the alphabet's letters. He jotted down over a hundred names, but none of them truly spoke to him. Until one day, as the man himself describes, one morning, while riding on the upper deck of a horse-drawn omnibus along Cheapside in the city of London, a genie whispered Rolex in my ear. And thus, history was written. So now you know the name was given to you by Divine, but it didn't mean anything when it was created. They chose it since it is simple and appears to be pricey. Number 2. They moved from London to Geneva not because it manufactures the world's finest timepieces. However, to save money on taxes. In 1905, a 24-year-old and his brother-in-law launched the Enterprise, importing separate components and putting them together. They opted to build the parts themselves after three years. Rolex officially departed London in 1919 since import duties rapidly rose due to the war. Switzerland made perfect sense due to its neutral stance and the availability of competent workers in the region. Not only that, but as previously said, Switzerland is also a tax haven. Therefore, it was an easy decision to relocate. This is where things become fascinating, and it's not discussed in any other Rolex video. Number 3. Rolex is a charity We detected something strange when we checked Rolex financial records for this video. Rolex is essentially a charity incorporated in Switzerland. So how about we throw some lights on this? We know some of you skipped the beginning of our video, we pity you. First, we discussed how the Hans Wilsdor Foundation owns Rolex. The Hans Wilsdor Foundation was created in 1944 after the death of Wilsdor's wife. The foundation has received all of Rolex ownership shares and precise and tight instructions on managing the company's funds. According to the firm, private charities are exempt from disclosing their philanthropic operations under Swiss law, and donations are kept confidential. As a result, there has been no confirmation whether this foundation has ever given a charitable gift. Furthermore, because a charity nominally owns the Rolex brand, they benefit from significant tax breaks. Now, before you folks alter your minds about Rolex, consider that the corporation was the only thing Hans had in his life. He was the sole shareholder and had no children. As a result, his purpose in making this move was to secure the company's survival. Even today, the corporation has no owners or stockholders. They are just caretakers who do not own anything. As a result, employees are paid exceptionally well, and the corporation is free to do anything it wants, because it isn't under any obligation to make a profit for its stockholders. Number 4. It takes one year to make one Rolex watch 
one Rolex watch takes approximately a year to create. And it is for this reason that Rolex watches are so pricey. Although the factory produces thousands of watches annually, each Rolex watch is still manually constructed. However, the commitment to quality remains the same. Each eye is put through rigorous stress and pressure testing to verify that it meets Rolex high standards. Robots and machines are only used in parts that can provide a superior final result than a trained human worker. In addition, it takes a long time for them to test each watch thoroughly. As a result, it's not uncommon for a look of the watch to take a year to reach the market. This heritage of perfection continues today, which is likely why watch collectors still prize Rolex worldwide. Number 5. The most expensive watch in the world is the 1958 Rolex GMT Master. It was bought for $3.5 million. The 1958 Rolex GMT Master was sold at Philips Auction House in Geneva only a few months ago. The beautiful Bakelite Cognac Brown Bezel is one of the watch's distinguishing characteristics. Composed of 18 karat gold, it is quite unusual because most Rolex GMT watches were constructed of stainless steel rather than gold. This specific Rolex GMT Master has been kept in its pristine condition for 58 years. What makes this watch worth $3.5 million is still unknown. Rolex has its gold foundry, which only a few individuals know. Yes, Rolex produces its gold. They have patents on three gold mixes and a seal combination known as 904L. It's no secret that Rolex manufactures practically all of its components in-house. But manufacturing your sort of gold took us by surprise. This watch appears to have a one-of-a-kind gold combination that was never utilized before. As a result, Rolex collectors see it as the holy grail. Number 6. The cheapest Rolex called the Air King It costs $2,200. Yes, an original brand new Rolex can be purchased for about $2,200. It receives the same attention as the other Rolex watches, although it isn't as complicated. The problem is, Rolex watches weren't always so pricey. A quality Rolex watch, for example, would cost roughly $900 in 1981. But in less than 10 years, the price had soared to $2,350 for the identical model, with few alterations. After that, they realized that the higher the price and the more the attention to detail, the better. And today, you can expect to pay between $8,000 and $10,000 for an entry-level Rolex. Number 7. The first ever waterproof wristwatch was built by Rolex in 1926. The Rolex Oyster, introduced in 1926, is the world's first truly waterproof and dustproof wristwatch. Every other waterproof wristwatch on the planet is a direct descendant of this one. It even originated the name Oyster, which is still used to describe waterproof Rolex models today. Mercedes Gleitza, the first British woman to swim the English Channel, received a Rolex Oyster from Rolex inventor Hans Wilsdorf to take with her on her second try. Gleitza wore the watch around her neck rather than her wrist, and the interior of the Rolex was a rid when she was dragged out half-conscious after 10 hours in the frigid water. Hans Wilsdorf made a brilliant public relations maneuver. Number 8. Rolex was the first ever wristwatch to receive a Class A chronometer certificate. For those unfamiliar with chronometer testing, it is a method of determining the accuracy and precision of a timepiece. It essentially guarantees that a model is highly accurate. A little Rolex wristwatch designated keyless crystal two-line bracelet watch was the first wristwatch to ever get a Class A chronometer certificate from the observatory in Great Britain on July 15, 1914, when Rolex was still situated in London. This had never been done before by a wristwatch. And only significant, ultra-complex mechanical timepieces could accomplish this level of performance. One of the standards of quality established by Rolex is that each Rolex item is subjected to 15 days and nights of rigorous testing by the Swiss official chronometer testing institute. Yes, they do it with every watch, which is why it takes a year to create one. But even more so, in 2016, Rolex altered the game once again. 
While most high-end luxury timepieces have an inaccuracy range of plus to minus 6, they chose to subject their whole manufacturing line to a plus or minus 2 per day chronometer standard, which is one of the greatest levels of accuracy among watchmakers globally. So they're genuinely promoting this as a standard for luxury watches, and the rest of the industry isn't happy about it. Number 9. Rolex proved that their watches can survive anywhere on Earth. After the war, a British Himalayan expedition led by Sir Edmund Hillary reached the summit of Mount Everest for the first time in 1953, boosting Rolex renown. Despite the severe circumstances and high altitude, all the team members' Rolex watches never broke down or lost a second. In 1960, the United States Navy dispatched a specially constructed research submarine down to 798 feet below sea level in the Mariana Trench, the deepest location on the planet's crust. A Rolex was mounted to the vessel's exterior out of curiosity, and it functioned flawlessly despite being subjected to severe pressures. Rolex participated in the Deep Sea Challenge expedition headed by Director James Cameron, Titanic Avatar, in conjunction with National Geographic in 2012, only to stretch their muscles again. The watch functioned admirably outside the submersible, where a robotic arm controlled it. Number 10. This is how you tell if a Rolex is fake. Let's be clear, you should never buy a fake. If you can't afford it, go for a less expensive yet authentic brand. By purchasing reproductions, you are not helping anyone. We wanted to get this out of the way because replica watches account for 15-30% to 30 of all watches searches on Google. The general rule is that quality survives the test of time, so you'll never find a Rolex for less than a thousand bucks, even if it's used. To refresh your memory, there are three areas where watches are sold. The white area, which includes actual dealerships with authorized retailers in premium locations. The gray area, which provides for people who sell what appear to be authentic watches but lack a license and authorization and the black area, which includes people who sell fake watches. Before you get your hopes up, keep in mind that there are very few vendors in the gray area, and proving a Rolex is genuine when it isn't sold with a license would require a highly skilled buddy in the watchmaking sector. Are you aware that strippers are taught to recognize a fake Rolex watch? Here's how to determine whether a Rolex is a knockoff or the real stuff. The first and most apparent red sign just look at the watch second hand. Rolex watches work in a continuous loop. They do not jump from second to second. Rollies that don't tick tock in the words of Jay Z. Second, the Cyclops lens on the authentic Rolex face magnifies the date, making it difficult to duplicate. As a result, most fake watches will skip this process, and the date will seem to be the same size. It should also be accurate in terms of the date. Finally, pay attention to the final product's polish. We spoke about how difficult it is to put together a genuine watch and how meticulous they are. So no cheap materials. Everything should seem like it cost a million dollars. When the strap joins, there should be a serial number. If anything feels off, it's undoubtedly a fake. Starting with the year 2000, one of the things to keep an eye out for, Rolex seamlessly inserted their crown logo where the 6 o'clock should be. It's difficult to notice and much more challenging to duplicate because the glass is of such excellent quality, only diamonds may be used to cut it. This is done with remarkable precision and should be nearly undetectable to the naked eye. Number 11. Rolex got scammed for almost $1 billion by Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff defrauded Rolex of about a billion dollars. When Hans Wolstor Foundation CEO Patrick Heinegger stepped down for personal reasons in 2008, the watch industry was astonished. Since Wolstorff died in 1960, he and his father Andre have led the organization. There were no indicators that their dynasty was coming to an end. It comes out that Rolex has a sizable stake in Bernie Madoff's 65 billion Ponzi scam. To cut a lengthy tale short, this person conducted what may have been the world's greatest investment fraud until 2009. He was apprehended and sentenced to 150 years in prison. Despite the company's public denial of the assertion, Rolex was one of the corporations that invested in Bernie's fund. Bernie Madoff's favorite watch brand was Rolex. 
and his whole collection of luxury watches was auctioned off to reclaim part of the money after he went to prison. Only $600,000 was raised, and speaking of crimes, this isn't the only one in which Rolex was engaged. Number 12. A Rolex watch helped solve a murder committed by the most wanted criminal in Canada in 1996. London was the scene of the crime. Albert Walker Johnson, a high school dropout and con artist from Paris, Canada, defrauded 70 customers out of $3.2 million in a mortgage and investment scheme. He escaped to England with one of his three kids after being apprehended by Canadian authorities. He formed a new investment company with Ronald Joseph Platt, another Canadian expat. To escape Interpol, Johnson took Platt's identity with his 15-year-old daughter masquerading as his wife when he returned to Canada. However, when Platt came to England in 1996, Johnson determined to assassinate him. He would have gotten away with it if he had taken Platt's Rolex off before throwing him into the English Channel. Unfortunately, the only thing that could be identified after two weeks in the sea was his still working waterproof Rolex. The deceased was recognized as Platt by police using service records, and Walker was found quickly. He is presently receiving a life term in jail. Number 13. Rolex is the official timekeeper for the Wimbledon tournament. If you're a genuine sports lover, your interest should extend beyond football, cricket, and the NBA. Rolex and tennis have been partners since 1978 when Rolex became the official timekeeper of the Wimbledon Championships. This date represents the start of a special relationship between two partners who share a passion for excellence. Despite having several ambassadors in the tennis industry, their most well-known is Roger Federer, the greatest tennis player of all time, for whom they willingly pay $15 million each year for his endorsement. Number 14. Rolex has over 60% profit margin on all their watches. All Rolex watches have a profit margin of over 60%, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is one of our least favorite circumstances when consumers start comparing the cost of raw materials to the price of the finished product. But as experts in the luxury watch industry, we felt obligated to solve the issue correctly. Yes, the cost of raw materials for a Rolex watch is far less than the price you are paying. However, this does not negate the fact that the pricing is reasonable. Because you're not paying for raw materials at the end of the day, you're paying for a lot of intangible value, and you're paying for innovation, for historical reasons, for a product that took years to create. In addition, you are paying for the time and skill of the world's best watchmakers. Do you believe that comes at a low price? Although this information is proprietary, here is a summary of the economics behind a $10,000 Rolex watch to the best of our knowledge. The watch is built for $3,000, sold for $6,500, and the producer gets a profit of $3,500 or 54%. The dealer who acquired it for $6,500 and paid $1,000 in additional charges sells it for $10,000 and gets $2,500 or 25% profit. So the chain's overall profit is roughly $6,000 for a $10,000 watch. Okay people, the video is getting somewhat long at this point, so let's wrap it off in style. Number 15. The most expensive Rolex is the Rolex GMT Master 2 Men's Diamond. A Rolex GMT Master 2 Men's Diamond Eyes watch valued at well over half a million dollars is the most expensive Rolex you can buy straight from the manufacturer. They coated an already expensive Rolex watch in as many diamonds as possible. Of course, who in their right mind would pay half a million dollars for a diamond encrusted Rolex? But compared to our previously mentioned watches, this isn't that pricey. Therefore, superstars like Brad Pitt and David Beckham splurged a bit to make their wrist glow. And that's it! Let us know in the comments what your favorite Rolex watch is. How many of you truly understand your Rolex? Can you imagine how many people have already left? So you guys deserve a bonus fact for staying with us until the finish. It's a competition between John Mayer and Mike Wood to see who has the largest Rolex collection in the world. Take a look at these photos.
So let's test who's a genuine fan by watching this video all the whole through. Please leave a remark below so that we can see. It's also amusing since it drives others insane who don't understand why we're doing it. Thank you for taking the time to visit with us and please subscribe so you don't miss a video. Again, this is Megan and see you on the next one.